Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel One on One, and today we're going to be looking at how to create internal detail in a fractured uh, object. Uh, for example, I have this RBD simulation. Now, uh, if I play back, I just play back the render. I have two versions here of the same simulation, but you can see this has way much detail than this. This doesn't even look that realistic, uh, but you can see that uh, the interior has some good displacement. Uh, it makes it look more uh, real. So we're going to be doing that. And another thing, we're also going to be creating an exploded view uh, using geometry nodes, trying to cre recreate the same functionality that you get in Houdini uh, whenever you fracture an object. Uh, usually you start with a very, very simple, a simple model like this. Let me, uh, so you fracture it. Uh, I think the first thing I want to do is implement this exploded view node in geometry nodes, uh, which allows you to just separate these pieces so that you can see the internal structure and uh, the individual pieces themselves. It's, it's really a very, very helpful uh, feature. And then we can add the interior detail. It's much easier to see the interior detail if you have an exploded view uh, node. So I'll be implementing that. So we have the fractures. Let me show you how to implement the exploded view. Uh, this here is the original fractured mesh, which I did using the cell fracture add-on. So you fracture this using the cell fracture add-on, have it in a collection. So this is a collection X and uh, I do an RBD simulation. Uh, you basically just select the pieces and go to object rigid body and active and then simulate or playback and uh, you'll have a simulation. I bake it to catch it so that I can easily uh, preview the animation. And uh, then I create a plane uh, that is going to hold the geometry nodes and uh, this is uh, the setup. It's not too complicated. Uh, the first thing I do here is importing the geometry because this collection contains all the pieces with uh, the animation that is also imported uh, here. Just make sure that you have separated pieces or separate children. That way each individual piece is its own instance. To implement this exploded view effect, uh, where you can easily separate the pieces and spread them apart. To implement that, all you have to do is uh, find the location of the nearest instance. For example, if this is instance one, uh, the nearest would be this. And uh, you just subtract the position of this piece from this, and uh, it will give you a vector uh, pointing to uh, the other piece. If you scale the results and apply them to the offset, it will basically push this away from the nearest, and then this will also have a nearest object so we push it and uh, this will have a will push it so that's what we are implementing here uh, we're basically getting the collection as is let's look at this here we are getting the index of the nearest this node is going to run for every instance we have uh, so for example if we start with this object or uh, this piece here it's going to check for the nearest so maybe uh, this and uh, the nearest is usually calculated from the center. So it's going to be maybe this. And uh, here we're just getting the position of this piece and uh, storing it here through this node and subtracting. So this node would be the position of this piece and uh, this position will be the position of this. So we're just capturing it using the, the index of the nearest. And now we are subtracting the position of this piece from this piece and that will give us a vector and uh, we, we are scaling that vector uh, so basically this set position is applying that vector whatever vector we get here onto the original piece if we scale it we should be pushing this away from uh, its nearest instance and uh, it's going to do this for every instance that's how i implemented that the next was to implement the interior detail. So the first thing I did was realize uh, the geometry so that we have access to the polygons. Let me delete all the other pieces and uh, just stick with one. So I will delete all the other instances uh, by just looking at their index. Let me compare. Let's say index at, uh, let's see, not equal. Let's see what should we work on. Yeah, let's go with uh, this chunk here. You can just work on one piece like this and all the changes will be applied to the others. I'm just going to focus on one piece like this just to show you what I'm doing. So this is an instance. So the first thing I need to do is realize it so that I have access to its uh, geometry. And you can see this is the inside piece that I want to work on and add extra detail, but it's not 
subdivide it. So what I'm going to do is is uh, subdivide it and uh, then add some noise on top of it. By the way, when you're creating the fractures using the cell, cell fracture add-on, uh, for example, if I go under here, quick effects cell fracture, make sure you add the internal interior vertex group, uh, which will allow us to select the interior vertex. So I can use the named attribute here, get the interior, and I can delete anything that is not the interior uh, so this would be boolean math not and i make sure it's faces so we have the interior now i can subdivide this to add more geometry to this and make sure that the final shape you end up with is the same as the original so if i disable this you can see it's yeah it's still the same uh, but sometimes if it's not try using the triangulate first and then subdivide you want to have even subdivisions but unfortunately blender doesn't have a good uh subdiv remeshing node uh, so we just have to go with uh, the quickest or simplest we can get now you can apply some noise to this say using the set position and add a uh, noise Let's do a vector math to subtract the offset maybe yeah so you can see we have this now if i join this back to the original uh, so this is uh, the outs the inside. So if I use a join geometry, I need the outside faces by themselves. Yeah, this. Uh, if I join this with the interior, you can see what we get. But uh, we're getting some gaps because when you add this noise, it's going to displace everything and uh, move it away, move the outer edges away from the original and uh, in fact i can even add a scale value here uh, that way you can see how this is happening so you can see the more noise we add the the more they'll push the edges away from the, the from their original positions uh, which um, kind of leaves a gap that we don't want but uh, to get rid of that we can implement a mask uh, that way the edges are not affected and uh, the easiest way to do that i found is by just uh, so this is our subdivided mesh uh, we can use the edge neighbors you now to select the boundary edges by checking how many faces uh, they have so if this edge node is only connected to this face but uh, any other edge for example this is connected to this and this uh, this one is connected to this and this so it's a good way to select the boundary edges and uh, i can just use compare so if the face count is greater than one uh, then we can delete those points and uh, that leaves us with the outer edge just like that and uh, what we can do with this is use the geometry proximity and uh, this will give us a distance mask so if we take a look at this uh, you can see we can get and uh, this has to be on points because we are we only have points here so you can see that uh, we get that mask that shows us the distance of the different faces are uh, from the edges uh, so if we apply this as this the mask for the scale uh, that way the boundary edges are not uh, affected by the by the displacement we have created we get this so you can see that now if i say scale this you can see the boundary edges are not getting affected anymore uh, which is exactly what we want so if we join back everything you can see that i can adjust everything here but the boundary edges will stay intact so that's the internal detail if i remove this delete where did i delete the uh, yeah this here uh, because i i used it to just focus on one uh, if i get rid of that you can see that now the damage is being implemented on everything just like that and uh, yeah that's how you do that if you know this is a bit confusing to you you can check out my geometry knowledge course and it will explain most of these basic concepts uh, step by step in uh, in more detail but uh, anyway that's it if you want to learn houdini because uh, it's it's always much easier to use uh, than blender so if you want to learn that i also have a course for houdini for blender artists uh, you can check it out uh, if you want to check out the project files maybe you want to implement the internal detail in your own projects it's going to be available for my patrons youtube members and on my gamrod page links are in the description thank you